So a couple things at the top before we take questions. Today marks the anniversary of three landmark Supreme Court cases which were consequential in affirming the basic truth that every American should have the right to marry the person they love. Ten years ago today, the court's ruling in United States v. Windsor v. Hollingsworth v. Perry made significant strides laying the groundwork for marriage equality in our country. They were followed two years later by the Supreme Court's ruling of o Obergefell v. Hodges, finally recognizing that LGBTQ plus Americans have a constitutional right to marry who they love. These monumental cases moved our country forward and they were made possible because of the courageous couples and unrelenting advocates in the LGBTQ plus community who fought for these hard won rights. Last year, President Biden was proud to build on their legacy by signing into law the Respect for Marriage Act, guaranteeing the rights and protections of LGBTQ plus and interracial couples. And he continues to call on Congress to pass the Equality Act to ensure equal rights under the law for all Americans. Our work is not over, but today we celebrate the progress that has been made and we recommit ourselves to the work ahead. As you all know, this week, the entire Biden-Harris administration is highlighting the work we've done to grow the economy from the middle out and bottom up, not the top down. The president's economic strategy has powered the strongest recovery of any major economy in the world. This morning, you heard the president announce 40 million billion, pardon me, 40 billion dollars towards ensuring every American has access to affordable, high quality, high speed internet. On Wednesday, the president will deliver a major speech in Chicago to highlight how his strategy of growing the economy by growing the middle class is delivering for the American people. Throughout the week, Throughout the week and clearly next several weeks, you'll continue to hear from leaders across the administration on how the president's economic plan is delivering results for the American people. With that, as you all know, Admiral is here to answer any foreign policy questions that you may have on the news of the day. John, the podium is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, look, I know there's still a lot of interest out there in events in uh, Russia over the weekend. So just a few words at the top for, for me. Uh, as you all just heard from the President, the United States closely monitored uh, those events, uh, with President Biden receiving literally hour-by-hour hour updates from his national security team throughout the weekend. And those updates continue for him. On Saturday morning, the President convened a call with his top national security aides to discuss the developments and any impacts that instability in Russia could have as we, as we prepared for a range of scenarios. Uh, and the President also convened calls with many of our allies and partners throughout the weekend, and those calls continue. National Security Advisor Sullivan, Secretary Blinken, Secretary of Defense Austin also spoke with a number of their counterparts as well. Now, as the President noted, uh, it was important that both internally here inside the administration and externally uh, with our allies and partners, including with Ukraine, uh, that we all uh, shared our perspectives on what was going on, and we all stayed on the same page. We also made clear uh, to all our allies and partners uh, that the United States was not involved and would not get involved in these events, um, and that we view them as internal Russian matters. We delivered that same message to the Russians themselves through appropriate diplomatic channels. I'll emphasize, as the President did just a little bit ago, that it's too early to speculate on the impact these events might have or to reach any definitive conclusions, except one, of course. And that is that no matter what happens next, we're going to stay closely coordinated with those allies and partners, and we're going to continue to stand with Ukraine. As we're speaking here right now, Ukrainian forces are still fighting for their country. They're still trying to claw back captured territory. They're still taking, and they're still inflicting casualties. So whatever occurred in Russia this past weekend did not change those facts didn't change the facts for us, didn't change those facts for Ukraine. And they absolutely are not going to change our continued support. So with that, I'm happy to take a few questions. Um, what implications do you expect this episode to have on Wagner's um, power and ability, both inside Ukraine as a fighting force? Can it continue to be a fighting force inside Ukraine, but also more broadly in Africa, where they, they have a big footprint? 
where, where does Wagner, do you think, go from here? Do you have any early read on that? No, we don't. And we, we, we don't know the answer to your question. It's just too soon to know. Uh, um, we recognize that uh, Wagner still has a presence in Africa. I think you know we have uh, worked to hold Wagner uh, accountable. They are listed as a transnational criminal organization. We have sanctioned them. Uh, we will continue to take those actions that are appropriate uh, to try to limit their ability to conti continue to sow chaos and, and violence, wherever it is. Um, but it's just too soon to know, after the weekend's events, where Wagner goes as an entity um, uh, or, or where, where Mr. Prokosian goes in terms of his leadership of it. Do you know where Prokosian is? I don't. Uh, Ukraine is warning that Russia has completed preparations to potentially blow up the Zaporizhia nuclear power station. Is that your assessment as well? Uh, I'm not going to get into specific intelligence. I would tell you that we're watching this very closely, seen that reporting. Um, uh, we're, uh, we have, uh, as you know, uh, the ability near the plant to, uh, to monitor radioactivity, uh, and we just haven't seen any indication uh, that that threat is imminent, but we're watching it very, very closely. And more broadly, as Secretary Blinken said, this has exposed cracks in, in Putin's power. Uh, how concerned are you that Putin could now be more desperate, more unpredictable, to the point that he could take more extreme measures to try and maintain his grip on power? Yeah, I won't speak for Vladimir Putin or hypo hypothesize about what uh, next steps he might take or, or, or might not take. Um, I think it's important to take a step back here and remember that the Russians still have tens of thousands of troops inside Ukraine. And that, as I said in my opening statement, there's still active fighting going on. Um, uh, the Ukrainians are still trying to claw back territory. The Russians are still vigorously trying to defend uh, against those efforts by the Ukrainians. And casualties are being taken, even as you and I are talking. And I think it's important to remember that. So what we're going to stay focused on is making sure that Ukraine can continue to succeed on the battlefield and not speculate. Uh, about what this might or might not do on the political spectrum inside Russia. As President Biden said very well earlier, this is an internal uh, m matter for the Russian system. Gotcha. Um, John, do you see President Putin as being weakened as a result of this event of the weekend? Again, we're focused on what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, th this is a, an internal R Russian matter. Um, and uh, I think it's important to remember that Mr. Putin still commands a very large and a very capable military. And the bulk of that military is across the border in Ukraine, and that military is defending itself against Ukrainian attacks. And we've got to stay focused on what really matters mostly in front of us, and that's helping Ukraine succeed on the battlefield. And that's what we're going to do. Whether there were U.S. Russia military to military contacts over this? Uh, I, all I can tell you is that we, through various diplomatic channels, conveyed uh, uh, conveyed those messages to, to Russia uh, directly. One, that there was no U.S. involvement here, nor will, nor will there be or would there be, um, and that we expect Russia to observe its obligations, its international obligations, for the protection of diplomatic personnel inside Moscow. Do you have any Actually, any, Africa. just a last follow-up on that. Do you have any indication that Russia thinks that the U.S., what, the U.S., the West, NATO, et cetera, were involved? Well, I, 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 I can't begin to speculate what Russians think uh, or what Mr. Putin thinks. Emphasizing that as because, the president. Yeah, look, we saw, uh, uh, we, we saw some social media activity by former Mr. Lavrov, who seemed to allude that uh, some sort of investigation was in the offing uh, at the suspicion of uh, the involvement of Western intelligence services. And I think we could all spare Mr. Lavrov uh, the effort by just making it clear there was no U.S. involvement whatsoever, no Western involvement. I wanted to follow up that, that as well. Given the emphasis both you and the President have made today, um, do you think that that uh, issue of U.S. involvement or our ability to know that some of, something was going to happen in advance uh, contributes to the instability of the moment? The, we're all concerned by any potential for instability in Russia, given the stakes and given what's going on uh, in, in Ukraine. Um, and I'm not going to talk about uh, intelligence matters one way or the other here. Uh, the rift between Mr. Prigozhin and the Wagner Group and the Russian... Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. 
We love you all. Please support MCAD TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.